We're going to start off by not looking at this. This is Socrates, or what we should really know as Socrates. Um, a lot of people know uh, this scene from Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure and think that somehow um, the examination of uh, what they call Socrates is a good review of classical Greek civilization. Although funny, it's not quite what we're going to be looking at. We're going to look at actually uh, who Socrates was and what he was really all about. Alright, so let's take a look at what we know. We know this. We know that Socrates wrote no books. So there are actually historical accounts that tell us things about Socrates in literature, but essentially he wrote nothing. So we don't have any of his own words that he might have written down and preserved. What we do know about him comes from Plato, his student. So his most famous student, Plato, a great philosopher in his own right, is the person who tells us the stories of Socrates and tells us what Socrates went through. Uh, so everything that we do know about Socrates comes to us through Plato. In fact, there are some historians that have argued that in many ways that Socrates may not have been an actual person. He may have actually been a sort of literary creation of Plato's mind uh, so that Plato could say and discuss the sorts of issues that he wanted to without himself getting in trouble. And so he uses Socrates as a character to sort of say the things he wished he could really have said. Other people have said that actually Socrates really existed uh, because he shows up in other literary sources as well. So it's hard to tell. Okay, this is what we do know about Socrates from these writings, and that is that he questioned fellow citizens about their beliefs. So he was very good at this. He often questioned them about their traditional beliefs, their religious beliefs, uh, their values about you know bringing up youth or education, but he was always questioning people. He was always full of questions. Uh, he used what we call the Socratic method, and a Socratic method is that simple task of asking questions. So, you know, if somebody asks you, why was that important? You give an answer and then they say, why? Um, you know, your answer is probably discussed at some length, but again, he'll ask why, why, why? Always asking why. Um, this might be a very good strategy that teachers still use today of asking students questions about why to explain themselves, but also it can become quite annoying. And in fact, in some ways, uh, Socrates may not have only questioned the local people in his community, but he may begin to have annoyed them by always asking them why and always asking them to defend them, their positions on why they stood where they did on their, on their uh, answers. Okay, so as a result, trial of Socrates takes place. That's because uh, Socrates angered enough of the citizens of Athens that they decided that they would put him on trial. So at age 70, he was put on trial. Uh, he had a jury uh, of 501 citizens, and the charge that he was uh, charged with was basically corrupting the city's youth, and, and in particular, uh, encouraging them to disrespect the gods. So again, he was questioning traditional values of their society, their religious beliefs, uh, and, and, and in many ways even their political beliefs as well, perhaps uh, things like democracy. And so as a result, he was put on trial, and he was eventually found guilty. And so uh, Plato tells us about the death of Socrates. Uh, during this trial, he was found guilty, and he was in fact forced to drink hemlock. That was his punishment. And he, in the story, willingly drinks the hemlock. Uh, it's sort of his last attempt to sort of uh, say to society, he's going to get in the last word. Um, and in fact, uh, he's at, at one point in the story, Plato tells us that uh, his jailers actually leave the door unlocked so that he would actually leave his imprisonment and perhaps maybe go out to the countryside where he would be ostracized and sort of an outcast from society, but he doesn't. Instead, he chooses to stay behind and drink the hemlock to make his last and final point of the sort of injustice imposed against him upon society.